Alrighty, hey there guys, welcome to another Train Simulator video. Uh, what you see before you is a Baldwin AS616. This is the Pacifics pack um, by Diesel Workshop. And I will say there was a bit of a, we'll say, sorted past uh, with Diesel Workshop. And this pack, uh, we'll say some things were borrowed uh, that mm, possibly should not have been and, and taken through the proper channels and you know things of that nature i'm not going to go into that too much if you don't know uh what i'm talking about you'd like to get uh, abreast of the situation i will link the video down below where you can see for yourself uh but with all that going on they released this pack which they said they were going to do they had since taken everything off their store and just out of the blue i think yesterday it was the 29th of march uh 2022 released the Pacifics pack and they also noted if you purchased the pack uh, initially which had the EFCB and the Sioux line uh, that would be updated but this is the most updated and current Baldwin AS616 pack from them currently now just a little bit about the Baldwin AS616 again I'm not going to go over too much because I did that in the first video I made of these it's essentially uh, a 16 horse 16 horse <laughs> Here we go, 1,600 horsepower, six-axle switcher, built by Baldwin, of course, between the years of 1950 and 1954, uh, featuring the 608A Prime Mover. Uh, about 214 of these things were purchased, uh, all in all, from 19 different railroads, as well as a few um, cabless booster units. Um, I think, I don't know how many of those, a couple of those. Those, those were part of the, like, 219, so I think four or five of those uh, were sent off. They were essentially sought after for their high tractive effort and mainly sat in yards their entire life uh, for the most part. They, they had a ton, 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 ton of starting tractive effort. Uh, and they were sought after at the time uh, and pretty much won out over what was on offer from EMD and uh, Alco. Southern Pacific had roughly 60 of these things, numbering 177 to 184, uh, let's see, I think 5228 to 5278, and then 5501 to 5505. Uh, Union Pacific, which is also featured in this pack, had, uh, I think, about half a dozen, uh, 1260 to 1265. And there's some new horns and new bells and new sounds on these things, as far as I know. We're going to check that out now. So first and foremost, this, of course, is the Daylight uh, Gorgeous Livery. Now, of course, it looks good. The model does look good. Um, nothing has changed on that front, I don't think. The coloring looks very, very nice, uh, along with the weathering along the bottom as well. The, uh, the logos, the lettering, the font. You got the correct number boards up here, which they had, and those look really, really nice. Nothing, uh, I mean, there, there are small variations to the model. Uh, without a doubt, but as far as the numbers and everything and the, and the paint from what I've seen so far these things still retain a really really good look Yeah, and of course these have these uh, the safety logos on the front watch your step and Always be careful. I think Southern Pacific had those on pretty much all of their uh, Baldwin's AS616 and other switchers as well, and just road engines, if I'm not mistaken. So some of these, I think, have the M3, the Nathan M3, so we're going to test that out now. That sounds pretty good. It's a nice sounding horn, for sure. Model looks nice. It looks like an M3 to me. I'm, I, I don't know my horns like the back of my big toe but uh it looks like an m3 kind of sounds like an m3 it's got a nice little quill at the beginning of it the end of it is a bit abrupt but it's it's a good sound nonetheless now it sounds a little different you know moving all around but i still think as with a lot of their locos from diesel workshop they're a bit quiet especially with this thing running uh, and you can't really hear them at a distance. Just a little quiet. Of course, we'll check the bell out here. Ah! 
I'm blind. Hear the click in there. The pneumatic click. Listen to that echo. That sounds pretty good. That sounds pretty good. Of course, the number boards work as well, so that's in. So they kind of backlight there. You can kind of see a little light fading through. These look great. I love the way these look. These light up as well. And the back. I think that's shift in. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, shift in. And then the headlight is shift H for the back. And there that is. And just H for the front. All right, so let's fire this thing up. I want to see what these sounds sound like. The main reason I got this, I want to see what they did with it. I want to see if they got sounds of their own volition. And, uh, you know, if they're good, what happened, what it sounds like, what it does, what it do. <laughs> so let's check it out. Now, that wasn't too bad of a startup. Not at all. Um, initially, when this thing came out, the sounds were updated, and there was like a, a midway patch, and I updated that, and those secondary sounds that came after the first release did not sound good at all. Um, these sound a little bit better. That sounds a little bit cleaner, the transition there from startup to run. We'll shut it off, see what it sounds like. Not too shabby. We'll hop in here, of course. This is the cab. It is different as well. It's green. I believe all the cabs of these are green. Uh, I don't remember the floor looking like this on the other ones, but um, it does look pretty nice in here. It's got some weathering as well. We'll see what kind of stuff we can mess with here. I believe you can open the windows and doors, as always, with most of their models. Let's see what the uh, the switches sound like here. Now, the slap in either direction sounds okay, but that middle bit sounds a little funky. That sounds nice and girthy, though. Do the brakes up. Of course, it's not on. That might help. All right, that's completely dumped right there. All right, let's fire it up inside. There you go. See the needles up there doing their thing. They kind of jump up quickly, which is honestly what I think they would do IRL. That's the engine start, shut down. Those don't do anything, those don't do anything. See what the horn sounds like, interior. And the bell. Got a nice hiss there. It's our sander. Let's see what we got here, wipers. It's actually a pretty nice wiper sound. Cab light. Looks very nice as usual. They do their lighting exterior and interior wise. Very nice. Here's our gouache lights, which again look very nice. Have a nice kind of yellow, dingy glow to them. Number boards. Number boards. We check those out. And the class lights. We'll check those out. Uh, I know there's a way you can change them from red to white to green. I forgot how to do it. I'm not going to worry about that right now. Here's your headlight switches as well. Yeah, still looks great in here. The uh, the green looks nice. We'll get that cab light off. There we go. 
Here's your uh, your emergency or not emergency brake, handbrake. Open this door. So, I've got some very, 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 very lovely searchlight simulations. Uh, freight cars behind us. Some uh, some two bays. And they're heavy. They're loaded. That's one of the great things about searchlight simulations. Freight cars and their locomotives, they feel nice. Now, this thing's only got 1,600 horsepower. We don't have a massive consist behind us, but we're just going to run it up see what it sounds like. I'm not gonna do it like that though. Here we go. Make sure we got all the doors open. Yep. Alright, so notch one. These are your views. That's a new sound as well. The, uh, that, like, pipe cleaning sound. I believe that's the, uh, the spitter. Notch two. Their smoke still looks very nice. Um, it's not, I don't think it's dynamic, but it still looks very good. It's some good-looking smoke. That's, uh, that's something they've, they've always done well. Notch three. Get wheel slip. Pop that sander on. Notch four. Now the transition between uh, three and four does not sound very good. It was just immediate. Five. That was a little bit better. Smoother, butterier transition. Notch six. That one doesn't sound good either. Seven. Yeah, transition's still kind of just quick, abrupt. But that one's not as bad as uh, four. Four to five. And notch eight. Which shouldn't sound too much different from 7, from what I know about these things. Wheel slipping like a mofo. You see the light on there. See the gauges doing their thing. And we'll break. The air sounds nice. The air sounds nice. Now again, um, you know, I'm I'm hoping these are totally original sounds. They they sound okay. They definitely sound better than their kind of emergency patch that they did. Uh, but you know, I don't know. I I do not know at this point. Uh, but they sound better than <laughs> than that emergency patch. That's for sure. Uh, as far as the first sounds they had. You know, again, check the other video out uh, if you'd like to become abreast on the situation. Or fresh, if you will. But we'll go ahead and check out the other liveries now. Right, so here are all the liveries within this pack. So we got the Bloody Nose. And I think I called this Daylight earlier. Definitely Black Widow. Where the hell I got Daylight from. This is what they call the Halloween livery. This is kind of an interesting livery here. It was sort of an emergency livery, if you will, that um, SP was kind of in decline revenue-wise at the time, and they needed a, a cheaper paint job because this right here took a lot of work and a lot of different paint, and they just wanted something real simple. This was like in the 50s, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and the crews and, and yard crews and all that just kind of dubbed it Halloween. Uh, black and orange obviously but uh, that's that's what that's all about now this is the tiger stripe I don't know if there were any uh, AS 616s in the tiger stripe livery um, 
maybe they were, but I, I've never seen any. I, I couldn't really find anything um, information-wise about that. It's a good-looking livery, though. Uh, this is the tiger stripe, so it's, you know, it looks pretty good. I like the stripes. I like the silver nose. Again, looks great. And then this is the UP, or Onion Pacific, uh, AS616. And this one looks very nice as well. I like the coloring on this one, too. It's got the dependable transportation on there. Now, that's not extremely sharp. I've seen Diesel Workshop do better font than that lettering. Um, you know, it's it's pretty tight, though, for what it is. Um, but, it, I've, you know, I've seen them do better. Whereas when this, you know, this right here looks great. And the number looks great as well. So these are the five you're going to get. Uh, the only one that's got a different horn is this Union Pacific one we're looking at right here, which I believe has got an A200 or a Wabco E2. And I believe it's the one that they used on their, uh, their Alco RS3s. Check that out here. As far as the interior, though, same. Green. Everything else is going to be the same. Got the same bell as well. So that's got the E2. And then here's the M3. And the rest of these have the M3 as well. So that's it. That is your Pacifics pack for the Baldwin AS616 by Diesel Workshop. Um, if you have the Sioux Line Loco and the EFCB, apparently they should be updating that with these sounds at some point, as far as I know. But, um, yeah, that's the pack. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll catch you next time.